Congratulations! You got yourself caught! Sir? Now what's the next step of your master plan? Crashing this plane! Ah, uh, the third Batman movie from Christopher Nolan in his Batman trilogy, The Dark Knight Rises. Not a beloved movie, it gets less credit, obviously, than The Dark Knight, but I really love this movie. Let me tell you why, coming up next. <laughs> The Dark Knight Rises to me is a great movie. It suffered from problems in its theatrical release because some fool shot up a theater in Aurora, Colorado on the day it was released, creating a lot of negative publicity for this film. I think that was based on you know all the publicity and obviously the crazy character of the previous film, The Joker, in The Dark Knight. This movie, though, really sort of wraps up the trilogy and makes clear it's a whole that's greater than the sum of its parts. I see the three Batman movies as showing you the development of the male warrior here, Bruce Wayne slash Batman, and the sort of warrior ethos, and um, it's sort of a male mindset movie as well. In the first movie, Batman is just becoming Batman, or Bruce Wayne is becoming Batman, and so as a young man, he has to deal with lots of problems. What is reality? How do I know what is real? And deceptions and illusions. He becomes part of the League of Shadows, he learns ninja skills, but also he is deceived in the mind-altering drugs of the Scarecrow, create delusions that Batman has to deal with. The second movie then brings up the next step in the development of this male hero who has sort of conquered or overcome delusions and illusions, chaos and chance. The Joker in a way representing chaos, Harvey Dent obviously with his coin and two sides of his face representing chance. The male warrior in the Dark Knight must deal with chaos and chance, two forces that are uncontrollable, unforeseen, and are very huge threats to the city. In the first movie, it was the outsider invading the League of Shadows wanting to destroy quote unquote cleanse Gotham. In this movie, the Dark Knight, chaos, the Joker, pops out of nowhere. We don't know his background. We don't know why he's doing what he's doing. He seems to just kill people and blow up stuff because he wants to. He's maybe a total nihilist, and so Batman has to deal with that. Now, in the third movie, the movie I'm praising in this video, The Dark Knight Rises, you get both of those elements. They don't go away for the aging, suffering, middle-aged male Bruce Wayne. In The Dark Knight Rises, the League of Shadows comes back, in a way, and chaos and chance in the form of Bane, and I'm not going to spoil it, but a surprise other villain who comes in, and you don't know who that is, and there's a lot of chaos and chance threatening internally the city, as well as deceptions and illusions that threaten to blow up the city here from underground. And Bane represents both ideological change and revolution as he announces to everybody, this city is yours, he captures the city, he takes over Wall Street or the stock market, and he tries to you know, overthrow the government, but he's also trying to blow up the city a la Ra's al Ghul in Batman Begins and cleanse it. As we know, Bane too was trained by the League of Shadows. Now we come here not as conquerors, but as liberators to return control of this city to the people. And at the first sign of interference from the outside world, this anonymous Gothamite will trigger the bomb. That's one of the points is, as Batman ages and grows and develops, all the problems of his youth and middle age, they don't go away. They keep compounding and to the point where we get in the Dark Knight Rises where he's dealing with basically everything. And thus you get the Scarecrow coming back in. Thus you get the League of Shadows coming back in. Thus you get the threats to Gotham being invaded, overtaken, and held hostage. Basically, you know, threatened internally and externally in this movie. The whole Dark Knight trilogy comes out of the decade of the 2000s, which... A lot of movies at this time, action movies and otherwise, were obsessed with the war on terror. This vague abstract notion of terror threatening us. What is terror and how do we defeat it? Can we ever defeat it? And Batman certainly wrestles with that very problem. Bane to me is a terrorist. So Bane is disguised as a revolutionary who says, we are forcing you to be free, a la Jean-Jacques Rousseau. What is freedom exactly? Batman seeks to liberate the city to a state of law and order, whereas, of course, Bane seeks to liberate it to 
total annihilation a la the Joker, but even the Joker couldn't dream up what Bane is trying to do to Gotham City. Now, I said this is a male mindset movie if we just take Bruce Wayne as the major character in the whole arc of the three movie trilogy here. This is about his spirit being broken. Yes, he can build up his body. Yes, he can get the greatest technology, but this movie in particular for the middle-aged man, the suffering middle-aged man, he has to deal with the fact that he has no spirit or he's lacking spirit, which is why Bane can beat him. The trilogy thus features falling repeatedly and the theme of falling and not being able to get up comes back in to this movie where it was featured so often in Batman Begins. In this movie, of course, Bruce Wayne gets thrust into a prison, a mysterious, where in the world is this, hole in the ground, Middle Eastern prison, tries to climb up out of it, Allah rises, the title, but falls, and thus that represents, of course, his spirit, which is broken, and can he save Gotham City, or can he rise enough to save Gotham City in order to have the right power of belief in the spirit of wanting to destroy Bane and save Gotham. In The Dark Knight Rises, Bruce Wayne loses everything. He loses his money, he loses his mansion, he loses his only friend, really, in Alfred. He has lost his, you know, friend from childhood. He loses his will, he loses his health, his body is broken in a fight with Bane, and thus he is cast into the middle of the earth. This is a classical move on the part of Christopher Nolan and other people involved with the making of this film. This is a throwback to the classical era when epic heroes, say Odysseus or Aeneas or Hercules, go down into the bowels of the earth, into the underworld, Hades. You don't get an underworld exactly here as in an afterlife, but you do get the descent into the earth, which the epic hero Bruce Wayne does, also called Catabasis. And that's where I think the trilogy here striving to be like an ancient or medieval epic which features a classic hero striving to overcome tragedy and the death of a city in order to make a rebirth of a kind so the difference in the hero versus villain here is where batman is trying to restore gotham to moral and civil order bane is trying to create a revolution that completely revamps gotham city and remakes it into something it's never been but of course that also involves annihilating it as well a la Ra's al Ghul in the League of Shadows. You could read this as a very conservative movie then. For one thing, it's about reformation and, and restoration instead of revolution, a la Edmund Burke and the, cl the classic conservative ideal of being against the French Revolution, other kinds of revolutions like it, which Bane could be aligned with. Also, this movie is harkening back, as I said, to classical epics and classical rhetoric and typical sort of great hero stories of old a la the dark knight he is a medieval figure who's going to save his city and being a civic-minded person well that's classic greek philosophy at least certainly in plato's republic and in aristotle's political work on the the politics in particular is that the city comes first, civic order and the concern of the philosopher and the king and the warrior and every other citizen for how the city is going to be properly or rightly ordered. It's basically Batman and Bruce Wayne's number one concern, of course, obviously taking on the vigilante role. So thus in the trilogy, you have the invasion of Gotham and Batman begins, the nihilistic sort of internal chaos in the Dark Knight and then the third movie, The Dark Knight Rises, to me features both in this sort of disguised revolutionary tones of Bane. And thus to me, Batman in The Dark Knight Rises overcomes the suffering middle-aged man problem of despair and loss of faith. Yes, he's dealt with delusions, which the Scarecrow has brought in the first movie. He's dealt with the nihilism and the chaos of the Joker in the second movie. But maybe the worst thing to deal with as you age and you've conquered all these other things is suffering and despair, which, of course, classical epic heroes have to deal with. Aeneas uh, losing his home, his whole civilization, Troy being destroyed in Virgil's great epic. And then, of course, Odysseus wandering endlessly, suffering in Homer's epic, The Odyssey. How does that aged hero overcome all the suffering to despair? Well, he gets up and he takes charge of his life in this particular movie. There are no ghosts, there are no fairies, there are no, no angels, there's no God. It's Batman with his own will, internal will, standing up, doing a bunch of sit-ups and push-ups and getting himself up out of that Hades-like 
prison in the earth. And so for all these reasons, I think this is a more of a serious movie than a lot of comic book movies I've seen because it does remind me of the great tales of knights and the great classical literature that I deal with usually on a regular basis teaching it. So for all those reasons, I think this movie is at least pretty good, worth watching, and worth sort of studying, at least in terms of its historical context, which is the War on Terror era and the question of what are cities gonna be now in this new technological age where they're threatened by all kinds of internal and external problems. Second of all, what is this movie in relationship to its other you know, predecessors, including The Dark Knight and Batman Begins? What do you think of this movie? Let us know and please subscribe to this channel and comment and like this video, really appreciate it. Have a great day.